Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome back. This is the uh, the second plenary evening plenary of day three, and uh, it is wonderful to be with you. We have uh, a tremendous um, session coming up. Today is uh, uh, June twenty uh, in most of the world still, and of course that is the United Nations Day of Refugees, the official UN Day of Refugees. So we're going to be uh, having an incredible panel about uh, the House of Hope. Uh, in Poland. Um, this is the amazing work of Nina Meyerhoff and Domen uh, uh, Kovacar and many others that have come together to fulfill and realize this dream uh, right next to Auschwitz in Poland um, and now open to refugees coming from Ukraine. It's an astounding, inspiring story uh, of collaboration and cooperation and just uh, the, the will to goodness uh, as uh, Avon has named uh, in her last speech. So I want to um, uh, introduce uh, Anna Marie Vahova uh, from the Hague Center for Global Governance, who's going to be facilitating this session on the House of Hope, staying up late all the way from Holland. Welcome, Anna Marie. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. And I would immediately like to bring in Nina um, as the founder, uh, co-founder of the One Humanity Institute and Doman, just to show his face already, he will be speaking later on, but it's it's actually thanks to those two people that have kept going, kept going strongly to really bring this into uh, manifestation. And before we start, we would like to kind of create a space of, yeah, let's call it sacredness and gra gratitude and gratefulness, and also of uh, letting our hearts open up so that love can flow. And Janice, please, would you guide us through that? Excuse me. Hello and welcome everyone. Good morning, good evening around the world. The House of Hope was imagined into being. I'm gonna start with a little snippet of Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. So let's take a moment, let's be present, present in and to the present, which is an unbounded moment of innocence and purity pregnant with all possibilities. Let's sit, let's sit for a minute with those possibilities and ask all of our ancestors, past, present, future, from both the inner and outer planes to awaken the compassion in the world and open our hearts and help us to recognize and remember ourselves into one humanity. I ask for a moment of silence to let this field of possibilities grow and ripple throughout the world. It will begin at the sound of this bell. Well, thank you, Janice. Yay. <laughs> the pregnant silence. It's wonderful. And I'd like to begin with explaining a bit about our historical uh, past. And first of all, to say gracious 
thank yous to Ben and everyone that we've been working with because only with them could any of this happen. It's a long story, but a very good story. And I look forward to telling it. About seven years ago, Doman and myself went to Auschwitz and we began to imagine what would be the solution to no longer have those horrors experienced on our planet. And we realized the only way is for us to finally become one humanity and to understand there are no separations. There's only the collective and the cooperative good that's absolutely necessary for us to move forward in a way that's healthy, that we call thriving, and that allows our young people to have a life of meaning on our planet. And so we began to imagine what could that be like? How could we set and concretize the ideas of one humanity? Because it's very nice lofty thinking, but how to put those thoughts into form? Very, very important. And so we designed a One Humanity Institute. And we went there year after year, working and working. We met with the mayor, the ministries in Poland, the president of the museum, et cetera, et cetera. And so we would like to share a short vision of what we imagine. And we still are working towards this. Doming, would you show the video of the Imagine? Of course, of course. But you, you say a few words, yes. Excuse me? It's okay. It's mm -hmm. coming. That's it. Imagine that there is an end to terror, suffering, trauma. Imagine there is a place unlike any other that is dedicating its total existence to this cause as the answer to one of the world's darkest moments in history. Placed close to Auschwitz, the city of hope or one humanity, focusing on collaboration, equality, responsibility, creativity and innovation to spread love and all our mutual caring. A city. A sanctuary. A response. To act towards a world of peace using sustainable, mutual, experiential paths for seeing the change. Imagine, this place already exists. With a team of people just like you that believe in this vision of a world of peace. Let's pursue this world together. So the magic began. Oops. And so the magic began. And at the beginning of the Ukrainian war, there was a sense of immediacy that needed to be attended to. And I, with two other people, Christine and Diane Williams, went to uh, Poland. We went to the border. We took 25 teddy bears, but we ended up with 1,400. It was amazing. And we gave each one out to individual children. And the eyes of these children, as they held the bears, as a walking across the border was amazing because they were so grateful, grateful that somebody cared. And their mothers, their mothers felt relief only for a short moment. 
But in this process, we realized everybody, nobody knew where they were going. Everybody said, where will I sleep tonight? And there were cots everywhere. It was a really disturbing sight. You had to see thousands of people lying on cots, just anxious, bewildered. And so we have two houses and that's pretty amazing. We have bequeathed to us two houses in the town of Auschwitz, Auschwitz, and we decided right then and there that we collectively would create a house of hope for Ukrainian guests. Now this house, it was in disrepair. So we had to work very consciously to raise money to make it possible for the guests to move in. So we put out GoFundMes, we put out letters, but it really was from all the people on this call. We worked together and that was what was so amazing. It was a synergistic explosion of cooperation and understanding and accepting that we all had roles to play, but only together could we make this happen. And we did. And we are so excited to share this with you. So I would like to invite uh, Tim. Are you here? Where are you? Yes, Tim? I am. Good. Yes. I don't see it, the face. Oh, there you are. Nice to see you. He is our first guest at the House of Hope. And we're really excited to have you there. He and his mother moved in this week. Yes. And he goes to school now at the local high school. And maybe you could share a little bit about your story, where you came from, and wh why you're moving into the House of Hope, and how does it feel to you right now? Yeah? Yes. My name is Timothy. I'm 17. I'm from Ukraine, Zaporizhka Oblast, town Tokmak. I went to Poland on the 12th of April. A lot of people in Poland helped me with clothes, food, money, temporary house, received me with great and warm hospitality. Kind men presented me a bike. My best plans before the war were to pass while exams move into a bigger city, Zaporizhia, to enter the university. But everything was changed. I want to study and work in Poland. My native town uh, had been already temporarily occupied, so we were forced to leave uh, our home. A war is always a bad thing. Uh, I live with my mother in House of Hope. We are happy that got a room. We have been living uh, for five days already. Very nice. And we're going to show your video, okay? Domi, yeah. would you like to, you want to say okay. something else? Tim, would you like to say something else? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, we're going to show your video. Hello, my name is Timofey. I am 17 and I'm from Ukraine, from small town Tokmak. It is Project House of Hope. Uh, welcome, please. Uh, we have been living here uh, already for five days. It is bathroom, not interesting. This is our kitchen, uh, fridge, uh, washing machine. So uh, here we we eat uh, some food. Uh, it is my room. Uh, I live here uh, with my mother, with our bunk beds, the sofa, here I do my homework, uh, I study uh, Polish and English uh, language now. So, uh, I want to study and uh, work in Poland, uh, I want to stay here. Uh, it is common room, you can uh, do some work here, 
uh, we can uh, uh, iron our clothes and it is wardrobe this room for six persons uh, two bunk beds and so one sofa for two persons it is my disciple it was presented for me and this is all uh, best wishes to Nina thank you very much for this project I'm very glad and happy to live here thank you very much goodbye You're on mute, Nina. Yes. Thank you. Elena is not here. Thank you very much, Tim. That was great. Yeah, we're good. Okay. And now we're going to have Dot, is that correct? Yeah. Talk about yes. yes, we're going to we're going to go to Dot to ask her to share a little bit about the Phil Helmich room because that's also very important for, of course, for the youth that are going to be in the House of Hope and shows another way of how we have collaborated together. And whatever you want to share, Doc, please go ahead. Mm, thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Nina and Doman and Timothy. Your story touches our hearts. We're so grateful that the House of Hope now welcomes you and your mother, and we look forward to the House of Hope welcoming others. Your video was beautiful. Thank you. So many of us, uh, began immediately working closely with Nina and Doman uh, as the Ukraine crisis began. And, you know, one of our beloveds, Philip Helmick, who was the director of peace with Shift Network, uh, he died a, a bit ago now, a couple of months ago. And Nina offered that, we were talking with John Raymer and offered that her team had talked about this and that the peace lab, the resource room there in the House of Hope would be in honor of Philip Helmick and his work with peace, world peace, children around the world. And so many of us are now assisting with uh, getting computers for that room. The Helmick family is preparing a plaque for that room. And uh, you know, Timothy, I have to say, uh, as you shared just now, what has always touched me the most deeply is that we have the capacity to come together as a world community right now and stand for what's good, beautiful, and true together. And if we can find a way in House of Hope to connect you with your schoolmates and teachers and friends who are still in Ukraine, that will make our hearts sing. So, thank you so much. Understand. Thank you, too. <laughs> yeah, it's very beautiful. So, Anne-Marie, I think that's, that's the basic story uh, as far as we're concerned with the Peace Lab. John Raymer came up with that name. And, it, you know, there are uh, numerous events this week that will feature uh, one of the teachers with the Peace School in Kyiv and others who have written children's books and other books. There are so many resources now being made available. So thank you. I'm happy to share. Yes. Because we've really been working on this for a while. It's still underground because we haven't finished the room nor gotten the computers, but we've already started to design what can happen. And we recently got a grant for youth to learn about climate change and human rights. And that will be one of the workshops. Plus we're looking at long distance uh, education so that the young people who are from Ukraine, even in the town can use these computers to communicate with their friends or the schools and get the lessons that they are not taking now because what happens in the Polish classroom, it's very difficult to learn under a, a different language and to have a different uh, curriculum. So this way they can have the exposure of both. And Tim is going to be leading the pack. 
<laughs> yeah, we're excited for that. So, you know, the whole house is coming alive now. We interviewed today different families. We're already bringing them in. We're deciding how and where and what will happen. We've really moved into the next phase of what we're doing. Yes. And, um, and I think, Nina... Yeah, uh, let me let, let's ask Kashi to join us because there still needs to be done a lot of work. There has already been done an enormous amount of work. And really, I would really love to say thank you. Thank you, Kashi, for you and all the other people that you have been able to mobilize in the town and the volunteers that have come. But please, maybe you can share what you would like to say, Kashi. Um, and, and then with Doman together, show a little bit how we're going to be seeing the next period of time, the House of Hope and the bakery site further develop. Yes, in a place of project called ba Bakery, because we called this place like this, uh, yes. planned on, on base of ordinary life of people at the time of a war, we experienced stories, families which were trying to survive, making and sharing a bread. Our concept including to show stories. We were and still are discovering how time of war was giving opportunity of showing an experience pure human side, supporting others to survive without borders between nations, uh, hearing their voices which almost uh, no one wanted or uh, was not interested to hear. Nobody knew that uh, we became in our times a part uh, of uh, almost the same situation, uh, helping people experienced by the war. The war in Ukraine uh, so near to us, our bakery to open the doors for refugees. The decision was very in the doubts. We are in the process of renovating space to give them the best op opportunities uh, to live there, like at home. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So, so really, as you're expressing, to see how something happened and immediately you were able to adapt and change and follow also and be inspired by what was happening and to see how you could offer the place. But that did require you to really get your act together because the house wasn't ready for people to live in. Huh? So please, can you share a little bit how that went? Because really, it was quite a, a journey. It was like very, very consciously and unconsciously action. So every people just start to think how to realize it and bring to their life the space for, for refugees and help them to be at home. Uh, we have a lot in Poland, that kind of experience at that time and also still now so be near so the so war and feeling people escaping from their country. So uh, we made some uh, team uh, which really follow our hopes and needs, and we made complete uh, everything uh, to to do forward. Yes, yes. and Justina everyone, was playing. Everyone, a... I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, and Justina was playing an important role in that as well, huh? as one of the, like, people from the town. And Justina, you're there, so maybe you want to just say hello. Uh, sorry, um, uh, Becky, we hadn't uh, said that Justina would also be there. This. So, Kashi, you really, huh? with reaching out to other people in the town to serve. Justina, do you want to say something? Oh, me? Oh, yes, oh, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I started with, with that team in April. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Just give me a second, probably. Yeah. Um, so I, I started in April with the team when indeed the apartment was just in, in scratch and uh, there was a lot of renovation going yes, on. Justina, I think maybe you're sitting on a mic or something like that. No, no. Nope. <laughs> can, can you hear me well? Uh, very softly. But anyway, you're saying that in April you started and the apartment was actually not yet really a proper apartment, was it? And then you really yeah. worked together. And we made it, we made it uh, 
to have the first flat ready right now and uh, that was indeed uh, great work of so many people who are volunteers and these were people from here and from the United States and there were Ukrainians themselves uh, locally uh, supporting like assembling furniture and everything so it's been a great to watch that it's happening and it happened and we can indeed welcome people already uh, yeah. with everybody yeah. So, yeah. so I would like to add because there were so many volunteers I want to share that there were volunteers from the United States that paid their own way paid for their hotel and worked for two to six weeks for nothing on the house, stripping wallpaper off, painting toilet areas, doing the dirty work, picking up garbage. Yeah, I mean, and these two people here with Doman's uh, input really put the house together and it is beautiful. So uh -huh. Yeah. Congratulations. Two, two of the two of the volunteers flew over from the United States and they celebrated uh, their birthdays there and uh, <laughs> never saying it's happening. So I said, how, what? So, so selflessly coming there. So uh, I will just round without the sound, the video behind and Anna Marie, you can just lead forward. Just how was the state? Because Yes. Now you saw only one apartment, but you'll see a bit of glances. That's it's a big thing, and then also for the future forward. So just go okay. on. Okay. Uh, yes. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Do that. Do that. Yeah, uh, it will be without the the sound, uh, yes, so you can. Uh, yeah. In, uh, or... I want to mention brother's brother, brother's brother, and the technology company from Pennsylvania because they gave so much time and effort and a lot of money. Okay. Don't I can now it's silent, yes? Yes. Okay. So, so do you want to share that? No, no, don't when you do it. Let's hear okay, your sorry. voice too. Let's hear your voice too, because you're there so often. I mean, Kashi, you're kind of like the 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 anchor that, that is there all the time, of course, and having the overview and with Justina. And then Domen, you come so regularly all the way from Slovenia or wherever you are in the world to really make this ongoingly facing this. Yeah, yeah. So you you're you're seeing so that's the apartment which team showed that was maybe less than less than two weeks ago. But there are now at the moment two that size of apartments and uh, two, three, a bit smaller ones, the potential for two more. But uh, as the vision is for the future, for the House of Hope is that it's also there a working space, what we call the Peace Lab, a bigger space that uh, people will be able to, to work together there and do programs. And what happened during all this preparation is that we connected very well for the local schools in these years and they were local youth coming and helping and cleaning and doing now this is already renovated the new <laughs> the new doors uh, there now it is as it is but soon it's gonna be uh, kashi you could say but i think this is a bit more forward forward now in few weeks everything will be finished but this should will be a working space but what is interesting here is also that we have, I'll show it here to the window. Don't be afraid. Now it's a bit different, but it's <laughs> going to be the inner courtyard because the House of Hope is in the center of Oshuenchim. And six years ago, when we started visiting Auschwitz with, with Nina, we saw the city, which is hostage of the past. We saw, of course, the nation, which is the hostage of the past, of all included. Of the, of the tragedy of World War II, we're all hostages of the past. And that was a dream, how to do something that would not uh, point fingers, but how to make safe spaces that will uh, start to dissolve that past without uh, being ignorant of it, but without being detached to it. Because I believe in 21st century, and we see how far we, we are with the uh, Ukraine war, but it, it doesn't deserve that people would be harming other people. It's, it's Oman, before you go on, 
Yes, please. Um, can you stop the video now and can you put on the future plans or the plans yes, that Kashi uh, is working on with the team? Because we also need to be aware of our time. Yes, um, please. I mean, that, we can share about there. this for a long time. But yeah, so please continue to talk, but then show the the plans that uh, Kashi has made. Um, yes. And, because you, Ukraine war caught us, all of us, yes, and especially people, people there. Um, but the vision of a bit before was of the One Humanity Bakery, which you see here. And uh, that was the response, really the immediate, the instant response of Nina, that this house here, which is planned in the future to be the bed and breakfast over the whole complex with the social innovation incubator and so on, uh, that we transformed this one in the house for the for the refugees from Ukraine. And of course, with developing, responding, and seeing the responses from the world, it became clear that that's a bit of a guiding process. I was very sad when I suddenly realized that for five years I was saying we're doing project because it should never happen again. And then it's and one moment it started happening just 300 kilometers away. And it was really a, uh, an, yeah. A reality check because we have whatever we're doing we're not playing with the world it's really happening now and we have to do and then you're doing it with the whole team and the whole big network now because it the now it's needed it's not a fancy dream but the future of humanity is very dependent of all our uh, uh, thousands and millions of mini or maxi actions uh, and it's not no more planning playing around yes and we responded to very fast. This is a nice vision, uh, but uh, now it's a bit different. Now people are starting to live in this house, which are really running away from a war and really hoping and envisioning and magnetizing that those who would be coming would really be uh, one feeling safe there and then slowly maybe finding some uh, uh, action vision how that we could support them to even give more back uh, in the future and let's see how it will unravel but we really see on the other side also what we're preparing is the very direct imminent platform response because that was was happening on one side we thought we need five free refrigerators on the other side five people say we want to support it and as nina said the brothers brothers foundation from united states and the uh, uh pittsburgh uh technology uh chamber i don't know how but probably some karmas connected us and really seeing this response of hearts an immediate response to the needs of it it's it's amazing and i think we should be more focused on this how the one less fortunate can get from those will be shared by those who has more because it's happening all the time that's yeah the sharing. Okay, Anne Marie. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And so, what we see here is on the one hand the, 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 the vision and the plan that has been made, and then putting it into practice, responding to the life conditions that there are now, but still seeing also that with that, we want to further evolve it into a social incubator where we can really offer um, and invite people to come in and to work with us on hope, manifesting that, seeing what could we be doing together in order to enliven that, to enlarge that, and to really feel that that can be part of our society to start with in the town, in Auschwitz itself. So that's why it's so important that we really have also not only Kashi there, of course, but also Justina and other team members that are coming in and the people that are going to live there. Um, I'm just wondering whether there's something, because I'm thinking there are a few questions that have come in the chat that I saw coming past, and I'm wondering whether we should be looking at that now instead of only speaking about the next steps. Um, so there's something about what we're looking at the people. Nina, do you want to say something? Because you've been speaking with families that are, and that we're looking at. So, so I think you're knowing more about the conditions there. So please share that. 
Well, uh, so so often the people are invited to stay in the hotels, but it's usually for a five day visit and then they move to another hotel or families have put up people, five extra people. But can you imagine if you're a family of five and you're staying in somebody else's apartment? It doesn't work very long. People are moving around as if you know, they're looking for a space that they can put their legs in and feel comfortable. And today we spoke with some people, a, a young woman, and she has three children. One wants to go to college. The other one wants to finish high school. They have to go back to Ukraine for the young girl to take a test in school so that to make sure that it's connected still. So we want to help with all these processes. So as the people move in, we will help them finding out about jobs. The, the, the Polish government has made a list of what they will support and won't support. And Justina is working with us to help them. Uh, so we're, we're growing the possibilities and we're really looking forward to doing more. And and most important, I want to say that this is our community, and we're really, really grateful for everything and everybody who has worked with us, because for me, it's been a miracle. None of us could have done it alone. We just couldn't have. It's not possible. And I, I, I remember having short conversations, like five words with Dot, let's say, and getting the message across. We need this or we're doing that. And her responding and taking it forward. And that's the way we want to be when we work collaboratively. There was no mistrust. And there was this sense that we were all in this together. There was no who's doing what and what about me and where is it taking? So it's been a great experiment and it's worked. And that's what's even more amazing. We've probably raised about $250,000. Now, I'm telling you, that's not easy in a non-governmental organization to do it over a short period of time from many, two, over 200 people on GoFundMe participated. I mean, it's remarkable and it's really being a family. Uh, so thank you, thank you, and thank everybody. So, I hear yes. you. Thank you, thank you, Nina. Uh, what I see from what Nina shared in the beginning, uh, what from the very beginning, why are we in the town of Auschwitz? Uh, and it was not planned, but it really showed slowly uh, why we were called there. We saw from my eyes, a big iceberg of a lot of pain and suffering and anger and a lot of pain mostly. And when we saw that and potential that we could with the most respectful hearts turn around this iceberg, we saw what a potential of inspiration could happen out of that. Uh, and it is so sensitive still after so many years uh, but we see that it is right time. It is the hearts and the needs are ready. But now it's happening live. Now with the house of hope and people just running away from the, from the war. Uh, and of course, seeing what is all happening, it's so easy to slip in the hate and uh, deep hate and separation and so on. And our dream is how to make House of Hope not just for those who would be su surviving there, mm -hmm. but really how to become a House of Hope also with bringing those qualities that we can see beyond, that we can go forward when it's time to go forward, and uh, that we are open for everyone in need, uh, and that we even inspire those who are coming from a very right corner that they could hate and uh, blame and so on, uh, but that maybe in the future could take, turn that around and use it for really to be the biggest impact in the future. And it really, it is so because we're, the project is already expanding and working yeah. with some orphans and education in Ukraine and so on. And uh, 
yeah, uh, Ukraine is really being reset and it's going to be a big question and big opportunity for humanity. What an example will be there where it is possible eh, without politically thinking. And so just on a human humanity side of it. So thank you. Thank you, Doman. Yes, indeed. And we're, in, and we're also in the next phase and we're also coming into the end of our time now. Um, but I just wanted to share also that you know, if you speak about, you see, we see the big picture, and then we see the smaller picture, then as you said, Nina, the beauty of the collaboration and the complexity also. And now in this next phase where people are coming to live there and be there, that's the next phase of really seeing how do we understand each other? How do we work together? How do we keep that communication flowing with all the differences and looking at that. So it's the next step in the collaboration and in the in the place that we're doing that in the town, in Auschwitz and in this with the people in the town themselves, with the people that are coming from outside, the international community. So the, the complexity in that sense is really as life is. And and to be aware and to work on that together. And I think it's beautiful that we're going to be that we're having this arc towards September Peace Week, because I'm imagining that in September, we will be sharing again once more here and then share our learnings. How did it go? What were the difficulties? What, were, what really worked well, Nina? And then we need to come to a yeah, close. Yeah, I just was going to share that for the International Day of Peace, we imagine having a panel of youth and the youth from Ukraine and the youth from Poland sharing their experience together. I think it's very important. And I want to say about Auschwitz, because I go there occasionally, and I have history with that so that you all know. I, I was always told as a child that my grandmother was gassed there the day I was born. And I never went there when I was young. But as an adult, I went there and I experienced internally what those experiences must have been like. And I must say, it was hard. I've been in war zones, et cetera, but really seeing how the extermination, the systematic extermination of a race of people, we never want to do that again. No, we don't. And we do it. For sure, we do it all the time in, in different ways. So I want to say also that there are two and a half million people that come to Auschwitz every year. So imagine if we just had 10% visiting the programs that we want to offer and offering them the possibility of dreaming a way that they can participate in making a better world. Because we all want to live in a world that works for our children, our children's children and their children. We must do this now. And there is no time left. It's now. That's it. Thank you. Oh, and I must share because we have these bracelets. I'm wearing one. I don't know if you see. Anne Marie is wearing it. They're beautiful with the sunflower <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. And a little red bead. So here we are working. Nepalese women who have been sex trafficked, living in community. These are glass beads. They've made them for the Ukrainian women who are suffering now. And there's a lot of sex trafficking going on, believe me, underneath the covers. And we're trying to address that also. But anyway, and Janice has a whole bunch of them if you're interested in uh, receiving one. She can share that information. But I want to thank you, everybody. It's been a great program. Thank you. Thank you, Nina, for thank your you, own, Thank you for your ongoing inspiration, Nina. Mm -hmm for your sharing and for your wisdom and also Bowman also supporting and the whole team here. And I'll hand back to Ben because he wants to do a little closing and um, making sure that we can continue uh, with the World Unity Week as we are and we will be showing up in other moments as well. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nina. Thank you, Doman, uh, for staying up so late. Thank you, uh, thank you, Anna Marie, 
for facilitating this. And there's a, you, there's more uh, where you can learn more about the House of Hope and what's happening. There are other programs. Nina, tell us, uh, and Demo, where else can people tune in? I know that this is... Uh, yeah, I, I, we're like going to be on May Peace Prevail uh, on Earth on Thursday the 23rd at 1 o'clock. Eastern time, and we'll be doing something different, but we'll be sharing more. Thank you. And of course, the internet site is onehumanity.institute yeah. or the info at onehumanity.institute for those who are on social medias. You know, it's such an important issue. And, and you know, it's been great to hear from uh, Timothy and the other uh, young people that you've got that they're actually benefiting from this on this day of uh, UN Day of Refugees. Uh, we couldn't have hoped for a more um, profoundly beautiful sharing. Thank you. And I know that so many people in the community are rising to support. Uh, you know, you mentioned Dodd and Janice and John, and, and this is an uh, this is an issue that around which we can rally uh, and your leadership. And you know what's so inspiring, Nina, is you have been on, no, you too, Derman, but Nina, you have been on this for years and years and years, and now it is bearing fruit uh, in such beautiful and glorious ways. So deep, deep bows. Let's keep going. We're on the 99 days of peace through unity. Let's have a vision. Let's push. Let's push hard for the House of Hope over these next three months. And let's celebrate again how far for we've all come. Of us. Get to peace Yay, thank all of us. Thank for you. all the work. Thank you, Anna Marie. Thank you very much. We're going to play a little video from Purpose Earth to close today with gratitude. And um, Emmanuel is, uh, is, is had a little bit of a health issue. So let's send our prayers and all of our blessings out to him as well. He's recovering. He's okay. He's recovering. But uh, uh, if we can, Kaylin, have uh, a perp message from Purpose Earth to close the evening plenaries of day three uh, of World Unity Week, this day of water. What an incredible day it's been, uh, you know, beginning uh, all the way back with uh, uh, Auntie Anne and, uh, well, with the, with the Green Sheikh, actually, to begin. Extraordinary uh, man, uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz, uh, and then Auntie Pat and... Uh, and uh, of course, Aunt Annie and Paulina. It's been extraordinary. It's been an amazing day. Gratitude to everybody. Thanks for being with us. Let's have a look at our friends from Purpose Earth. Thank you very much.